In today's video, we are going to be talking about the AgCycle software. What AgCycle is going to allow you to do is going to be to calculate thermodynamic cycles that can be for either propulsion, power generation, or any other type of cycle as well. So whether it could be uh, in the aerospace industry, uh, in the automotive industry, uh, for refrigeration, uh, power generation, as I mentioned, clean energies, renewables, and so on. Here we're going to have a pretty good flexibility in terms of all the different types of systems we're going to be able to use. Um, so iCycle is going to be a 0D tool in which we are going to be using a couple more dimensions for some of the different elements depending on what kind of detail we want to put within the software or within the system itself. Um, the way iCycle is going to be flexible is that we're going to have here on the left side different libraries that are going to correspond to the different groups of components that we are going to see within the tool. So for example here we would have the turbo machines library which is going to include different types of turbines, compressor and also different types of pumps. So for example here one would be mechanically driven and one would be here electrically driven. So these two components as an example would have different ways that they would be modeled and different ways that they can be coupled to other components within the system. For example, we could have a turbine driving this pump right here. Uh, so well, as I'm going to go through the uh, introduction about this uh, particular software, I'll go over some of the different libraries that we have in here um, and their components. Obviously not all of them here. If you want more information, you can email us and we can do a private demonstration for you uh, and your team. Uh, but here you can just review the type of uh, components that we're going to have within the tool itself. The uh, first part of the uh, modeling process is going to be for you to create your system of interest. So that's going to be done within the cycle tab, which is going to be the one that we see right here. So here, it's going to be a pretty easy uh, thing to do. We are just going to be dragging and dropping components from the library onto the, um, uh, the diagram pane, which is the one that we are going to see down here. And this is where we're going to be doing all of the different um, manipulations of the uh, of the system itself. So we'll be able to connect the different components using the mechanical ports, the flow ports, uh, electric ports or heat ports if we have some. But we're also going to be able to go inside each of the components to review the type of data that's going to be both inputted or calculated by the software. Um, so here, what I'm going to be talking about is going to be very important, and that's going to be linked uh, to what I'll refer to as the uh, flexibility of problem formulation. So what I mean by this is that once you're going to have your cycle, which we don't have at the moment, but once you do have it, you have the opportunity to uh, calculate it in uh, different ways without having to change the uh, physical system. So the way this is going to be done is if we look at the properties table that we're going to have here on the right for the turbine, we're going to have some properties at the inlet of the component, in this case again the turbine, some at the outlet and some for the entire component. So these are going to be the power on the shaft, we're going to have the efficiency um, and so on and so forth. While for the inlet and the outlet, we're only going to be seeing uh, some type of thermodynamic data. So mass flow, pressure, temperature, entropy, the fluid quality, entropy, and the uh, specific volume in this case. So here, what we are going to be interested in is going to be to look at the property types that we're going to see on the right-hand side. This is going to allow us to select if we want this particular parameter to be calculated or to be uh, set as a fixed value, so a boundary condition for my particular system. So in this case, if I know that I have a pressure coming at, for example, 80 bar, then I would click on fixed, and then, sorry, this is for my mass flow. Um, so here, for example, if I know I'm going to have a mass flow of 400 kilograms per second, I can input it here, and as the iterations are going to occur, this value is going to remain fixed um, for the entire calculation. And finally, the last type of parameter we're going to see is going to be the initial parameter. Uh, this one gets people confused the most, um, but the, the concept is going to be pretty simple. Whenever we start the iteration process, it helps the software if 
we provide a value that's not going to be equal to zero for certain parameters within the, uh, the cycle here. So here the only thing that we're saying is, okay, I want you to try to solve it with, for example, a pressure of 5 bar at the inlet of the turbine. And if you can't find a solution to the system with this value, then we're allowing the software to change to whichever value would make sense based on the whole physics um, behind the equations. So these are going to be the different types of properties and how they're going to be uh, used within the system. So that means that once you're going to have, a, um, for example, a cycle, uh, let's say for this turbine, we have defined the mass flow, we've defined the pressure and the temperature. Uh, we'll, we'll do this real quick, and just to give you an example. Okay, uh, one bar is fine. And let's do, for example, 600. So here, I'm going to specify my fluid, and we'll come back to the fluid in just a second. Uh, and I'll just use simple air here. Okay. So here, as you can see, Hack Cycle is going to help you with troubleshooting your cycle. Um, because this is a very quick introduction, I'm not going to go over this particular concept. Um, but you saw, for example, here, I had a pop up that was telling me that my component was not linked to anything. Uh, it told me there was an error with the links. But that's because the fleet ports of the turbines were not connected to anything. So the component was standalone. Um, and if we want to model a standalone system, that's perfectly fine. We can do this, but we have to connect it to these components here um, that are called multiple ways, formally and informally. Um, I like to call them uh, black holes because they are going to contain no information whatsoever. And it doesn't matter what comes in or what comes out of them. So here, if we look, for example, at this particular one or at this one, we're going to see the properties table is going to be completely empty because here this does not carry any type of information. If I go ahead and calculate my cycle now, I don't have the pop-up anymore, and I'm going to be able to review um, the log, including what's going to tell me that the iterations indeed converge for this particular cycle. So now let's take a look at what we, what we did just now. Uh, we specified as fixed values a mass flow, a pressure at the inlet, a temperature at the inlet, and also a pressure at the outlet. So here, I don't remember exactly which value I used for the temperature at the outlet, um, but I definitely did not think it was going to be this particular and exact value here. Uh, I had specified either 600 or 800, I don't remember exactly. But here we can see that the software did not find um, a physical um, solution that was converged for this particular value, and therefore it changed it to the value that would make sense based, in this case, on the efficiency of the turbine. So if I were to decrease or increase the efficiency here, then we're going to see this value is going to increase. I decrease the efficiency, I have less uh, heat drop within the, uh, the turbine, and therefore the temperature at the outlet is going to be higher, which is what we're going to see in this particular case. Okay. Um, but now let's say, instead of specifying this data, I want to figure out how much mass flow I'm going to need in order to get a certain amount of power being uh, produced by this turbine. So currently we see that the power on the shaft is around 32.3 megawatt of power. Here that's minus sign because it's coming out of the component. Uh, but what we can do on the other end is we can select that we want the power on the shaft to be fixed. And we and let's say we want to get here 30 megawatts of power. So in such in such a case I'm going to be over constraining my system if I leave everything as such, because for all of the fixed values that I've specified, there's going to be too many um, or not enough equations in order to solve the system, if, if you think about it in, in terms of uh, linear systems. Uh, so what I'm going to do is one of these four fixed conditions, I'm going to have to specify it as, uh, as a floating value, so not something that's going to be fixed. So that's going to depend on what my goal is going to be. Do I want to change the outlet pressure? Do I want to change the inlet pressure, the temperature, or the mass flow? A simple solution here would be to just look at the mass flow, even though it's going to be the same for uh, which parameter we're going to look at. So here I set as initial, just so I have some value again that's not going to be zero to help with the uh, convergence process. I click calculate, and here I can see that for this particular set of boundary condition, to get 30 megawatt of power, 
I'm going to need around 93 kilograms per second of mass flow of air coming through this turbine. Okay, so that defined the uh, flexibility of cooling formation, which I really think is one of the big plus um, of Axe Cycle. Um, there's obviously a lot of things I could be uh, telling you that are going to be great, but I'd rather show them to you so you can get a very brief idea about what is going to be um, interesting for you based on your current processes and what you're looking for in a given tool. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be creating an aerospace engine uh, cycle. And um, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to do it from scratch. So here I'm just going to get rid of everything. And um, I will use a, a very step-by-step -step approach to show you the complete process from scratch as we would recommend it to, uh, to, re to beginners. Of course, as you would gain more experience with the software, you would not have to follow such a step-by-step -step approach. Uh, but here I want, I want this to be as introductory as possible. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do here. So I have my uh, portal here. I'm going to include two more components. One that's going to be this guy, which is going to be what we call the ambient component. So based on the altitude, uh, the condition at sea level, the aircraft speed, or the Mach number, we are going to automatically calculate the uh, local pressure and temperature. Um, and that's that is then going to be fed through the rest of the system. Uh, when we use the uh, the ambient component, typically we're going to use an intake with it. So here I'm going to link the two together and we can take a look at what the intake is going to look like. It's going to have a particle efficiency. Let's leave it as one uh, for the purpose of the demonstration here. Okay. So now we have to think about what we're going to want to calculate here. Uh, so typically what you would have is going to be some requirements for, uh, for thrust. So the thrust can be, um, can be estimated, uh, well, can allow you to estimate things like the mass flow rate, for example, based on the ambient conditions, what kind of pressure ratio you're going to have, your firing temperature, and so on. Um, but we're going to see that the thrust is going to be one of the last parameters uh, that is going to be uh, calculated once we're going to have the complete cycle. So what we're going to do for now is we're going to fix a more or less arbitrary value for, uh, for the math flow rate here. Okay. So in this case, let's use, for example, 470 kilograms per second. And at the outlet, uh, we are going to have to specify usually either the temperature or the enthalpy as, again, an initial value just to help with the uh, convergence process. So here we know we have an efficiency of 1, so we don't expect any temperature drop within the component. So I'm just going to specify the same value at the outlet compared to what we have at the inlet here. I mentioned I was going to talk about fluids too. So here we're going to have different, uh, different ways that you can include some fluids in your system. We have some that are already going to be embedded in the software. You can also link this to two different libraries. One is going to be the NIST RevProp library, which is going to have a series of a certain number of fluids here. Um, but if you don't have uh, the NIST software on your computer, you can always use the included uh, CoolProp library. So CoolProp is rather similar to RevProp, uh, except that this one is going to be free and again comes with the software. So all of these fluids would automatically come uh, with the installation package. In our current case, we are going to be using simple air. Uh, I will show you later on how you can also create your own uh, fluids, for example, for fuels or combustion products, uh, like what we're going to be using in this particular system. But for now, we're, we are just flying um, outside, so we're going to have just some air uh, as the working fluid. I'm going to go ahead and calculate this. Here we're going to see the iterations converged. So that means that this very small subsystem is going to be currently uh, self-sustaining, is going to be working uh, properly. What I'm going to do from here is instead of having to click on the component and review all the different properties on the right side, I'm going to go to my auxiliary elements and then use uh, this particular uh, element right here. So this is not actually part of the cycle, but it's just going to be uh, some quick helper that will tell you 
the different values of interest for your particular system. So in our case, we have by default the mass flow rate, which is going to be G, the pressure, the temperature, and the entropy. You can always change them if you want, and you can rename any of these um, as well, depending on what you're more used to. Um, I could also include here the units, so we can see what type of unit each of these is going to correspond to. Because here, if I see 470 for the mass flow, I would be able to refer to this table to see that this is indeed going to be some kilograms per second uh, unit. I'll remove this for now, we don't really need it. This is more for whenever you're going to be creating your, your report. Okay, so currently we have this uh, very simple system. I'm going to be saving this. And now, um, because I said I was going to take a very step-by-step -step approach, I'm going to include the next component that's going to be downstream. So here it doesn't really matter where you're, where you're starting in the cycle. Uh, you could be starting from the inlet, like I did here. You could be starting from the turbine. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. So here I'm going to be deleting this link, and I'm going to include the next component of interest. And we're going to see, in this case, this is going to be a fan we're going to be using a turbofan engine here. So I'm going to be connecting the inlet like we did here and because we have a bypass fan we're going to have a core flow which is going to be this one and we're going to have a bypass flow which is going to be over here. So this bypass flow is going to be something that we'll, we'll take care of toward the end of the, of the uh, demonstration. Now let's take a look at this particular component. It's going to have an efficiency I will just put it as one for the, uh, uh, just to have some very simple, uh, okay, uh, some very simple scheme here, and we're also going to have a bypass ratio, which is going to define how much flow is going to go to the core versus how much flow is going to go to the bypass itself. So here I'll put 4.5, which means that we'll have 4.5 times more mass flow going into this link compared to that one right here. For the efficiencies. Um, Let's take, for example, 85%. So for both the, uh, the bypass and the coefficiency. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is in the same way that here I had inputted some, uh, some fixed conditions and some initial values, uh, I'm going to be doing the same thing for this particular component. If I go ahead and click on calculate, it would otherwise tell me unsuccessful completion. And here would give me some information regarding what kind of parameters I'm currently going to be missing. So you can use all of these warnings to see, for example, the mass flow here in link number three is missing. So I can go to my table, I can see link number three, and here it tells you there's going to want an initial data. So you click on initial, and then you would say, okay, I know I have 470 at the inlet, uh, so now we're going to do some very simple math, take Mm, roughly 15-20% of what we have here, and that's going to end up being, I don't know, for example, um, 80 kilograms per second. Okay, and here again we have a minus sign because it's coming out of a component. Uh, let's do the same thing here for for this uh, link at the top two. So we know there's going to be 4.5 times more than this. Um, so let's go, for example, with a 350. It's not exact math, but again, the software is going to correct this automatically. So now when I click on calculate, we're going to see that now I'm going to have a much smaller list of, um, of particular properties that are going to be needed to be specified in this case. Um, because I have a bit more experience with software, I don't really need to read all these. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, and specify uh, uh, what is missing here. So I know I'm going to need my pressures. So that's going to be... Uh, I don't have a pressure ratio here that's specified yet. Let's see. Mm, so here what I'm going to do is specify the pressure ratio for each of the um, core and the bypass. So let's set, for example, this to 1.64. And I know I have 1.01 um, bar at the inlet. So I'll just do 1.65 here and 1.65 here as well. Okay, so that's just based on, uh, on these values here. The pressure ratios for the core and the bypass versus what we have here at the inlet. Um, now I'll, I'll have to do something pretty similar for the temperature. 
I know that for a compressor the uh, fluid is going to warm up a bit. I have 288 at the inlet, so I would expect something around 300 uh, or more in this particular case. So we'll run this here. Okay, so now we're just going to be missing one, uh, one particular uh, property. And for this, as an example, we can take a look at um, either the heat or the mechanical port down here. So the heat loss is going to be a function of the efficiency. Um, in this case, I'll, I'll just leave it as, uh, as a very small value because it doesn't really matter um, as long as it's not zero. So I'll go ahead and calculate this. And now we can see the iterations converged. And now we're going to have access to all the data that's been uh, calculated. I'll save this. I'm going to move on uh, to, the, uh, to the next uh, components. For this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to input the uh, two compressors because here we have a two spool um, in addition to the to the fan here. Uh, but we're going to be putting the um, uh, the two compressors that are going to go downstream uh, of the uh, core flow here. So we'll go back to move to the machines, put the first compressor, second compressor, and then connect them down here. Okay, E pressure ratios here, uh, let's set them up. Uh, this one will be 1.22 with an efficiency of 84%. Mechanical efficiency, that's going to be how much power actually goes to the shaft. Um, the shaft is not going to do anything yet, but we'll connect this to the turbine later. I'll just leave it as one for now. And I'll do something very similar for the uh, high pressure compressor as well. Uh, here the pressure ratio is going to be much higher, so in this case 17.9, leave this as 1, and let's take 88% for the efficiency here. Okay. Alright, so in this particular case we define the pressure ratio, so this component is going to behave very similarly to what we saw for the fan. So if we take a brief look at what we defined for the fan outlet, we can see we have a pressure, a temperature, and we have a mass flow. The reason why we specify the mass flow here is because we have a split between two different flows. In this case, the mass flow here and here is going to be the same, so I would not necessarily need to, uh, to input this. But the, uh, the pressure at the outlet and the temperature at the outlet will be some pretty good uh, things to specify for, uh, for the compressor. Okay, So we're going to go to the outlet. We could look at the uh, temperature and the pressure as well. Now I know I have a 1.22 pressure ratio, so I can expect something around the order of 2-ish, uh, and the temperature is, going, temperature is going to be warmer, so for example, uh, 350 here. For the heat loss, I'm going to specify another value as well, something very small. And for the high pressure, I will do something very similar as well. So here you can see the process is I don't want to say repetitive, but it's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, you try to figure out how your component is going to be uh, working, what kind of data you already know based on the previous subsystem uh, that you calculated, and that's going to really help you understand uh, what kind of input data um, and how you should set up your, your system downstream of the subsystem that you do know uh, from the previous calculations. Okay, so here I just took um, some data based on, uh, on whatever pressure ratio I had. I've, I estimated I have about a pressure of 2 here, so multiply by uh, 17 something, that's going to be roughly 35 bar, which is what I have here. So I can then click on Calculate, the iterations are converged here, and we can see this compressor consumes 45 megawatts of power, while this one here is going to be at 2 megawatts of power. Okay. Uh, let me th save this, and then we're going to move on to the next component, which is going to be the uh, combustion chamber. So the combustion chamber is going to be an in interesting component because we're going to have to, uh, to deal with uh, creating or selecting a fuel and also creating or selecting uh, some flue gases. So here we have different types of combustors. I'm not going to go over them. Uh, but we're going to have our air inlet, which is going to be right here, and we're also going to have 
or fuel inlet, which is going to be this one over here. So I can go inside the combustion chamber. I'll put the efficiencies here as one and one. And uh, what I'm going to be setting up for this particular um, model is going to be the temperature um, as, uh, um, as it's going to come into the turbine. So what I, what I have here is the outlet temperature from the, from the combustor, and I will set this to um, uh, 1300 uh, Celsius, more or less, uh, a couple of degrees. So now we have the air inlet which we already know from the compressor here, from link number six. We're going to have the fuel inlet, for which we're going to need to define uh, the medium. And we're also going to have the flue gases here at the outlet. Uh, so here we're going to go ahead and go to the options, set custom fluid. And here we can see in this particular case, I already have uh, the fluids I'm interested in, but you could here click on new, and then that's going to help you uh, create a new file Oh, sorry, a new, a new fluid, uh, which you can use for, uh, for your project. So here you can see you have a selection of different uh, fluids. C C8H18 is the fluid I'm going to be using here for, uh, for my fuel. And if we look at the fluid gas that I'm going to be using, we can see in this case it's going to be a mixture. Um, and if you're going to be using them as fluid gases, you don't actually need to know the exact value uh, of the molar fractions, and you don't even need to know the exact compound. Uh, the software is automatically going to, to calculate these for you, as we're going to see. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the fuel, and then because I do want to use the fuel as I defined it, uh, and I just showed you as a 100% C8H18, I'm going to be using a fixed composition. So it's going to be my custom fuel with a fixed composition, and this is indeed the fuel that I want to use. I will assume a particular value of mass flow of fuel coming in, for example, one kilograms per second. For the pressure, I'll just take whatever value we have at the outlet of the compressor, which is in this case 36.2 bars. And for the temperature, this is going to be a critical parameter. Uh, I can put, it, for example, at uh, 100 Celsius, so it's going to be 373.15 uh, Kelvin. By the way, you can change the unit at any point, and everything gets automatically recalculated for you. Okay, so let's take a brief look at the outlet. In this case, we're going to have a variable composition, which is going to depend on uh, my temperature, my combustion efficiency, the air fuel ratio that I use, um, and so on. And here is the flue gases that I want to use. And we're going to set the temperature at the outlet as the same value as what we set up up here, so the 1580. Once this is ready, I'm going to be able to, uh, to calculate the cycle, or I can just go ahead and also input here the um, the uh, information for the turbine as well. So I'm going to go here, select my high pressure turbine, copy it for the low pressure turbine here, and then connect everything together. So the three ports, and here the mechanical ports down here as well. Okay. So this is going to help with matching the, uh, the power from one component to the other. I could also add here a generator or a motor if I want to, to have a more, more or less power being produced or consumed by the system. Uh, for the turbine efficiencies, I'll put 84% for the first one and 92% for the second one. And let's go ahead and set up the pressure for, for uh, the outlet of the turbine. So we know we have 36 bar coming in. Um, here, here the uh, power of the turbine is automatically going to be calculated based on how much power is consumed by the compressor. So that means that the pressure at the outlet of the turbine is going to be a parameter that is going to be uh, calculated by the software itself, which is why I'm putting it as initial. Otherwise, I would put it as fixed, in which case um, I could generate more power by um, having a generator connected to those.
So it would be the same thing as having a uh, gas generator and then a power turbine connected to it. Uh, so here I'll, I'll say that I have six bars at the outlet and something smaller for the temperature than the... Uh, how much did I have here? Uh, 1580 cells, uh, Kelvin here. So let's take, for example, uh, 1200 Kelvin. I'll do the same thing for, for the turbine down here as well. So I go to the outlet, pressure, temperature, and put here in this case again a lower value compared to what we had before, because the turbine is going to have a heat drop uh, and a pressure drop. Okay, here my iterations converge, and we can see this turbine is going to be producing 2.03 megawatt of power, which is the same as what the compressor here on the other side is going to be consuming. So this way we have a perfect power match between the two components. It automatically defines or determines the, uh, the corresponding pressure uh, at the outlet of the, of the, of the uh, turbine. So of course, um, which is going to be here, so 6.7 something. Of course, everything is in the end going to end up going back to the atmosphere, and that's going to be done in the uh, in the nozzle. So that's going to be the next component that we're going to be seeing here. We just clean this a little bit. There we go. So now what we're going to do is take care of what's happening in the bypass flow. So for this, we're going to have a duct, which is going to be in my auxiliary components going to be connected down here and we're going to have a converging channel for this particular case but you could also have different types of, uh, of uh, nozzles as well so here for example this one is a converging nozzle with a uh, mixing flow so you're mixing the uh, bypass flow and the core flows together as we're going to see here but you can have some converging divergent channel I think it's going to be the case here or some converging channel where the bypass and the core flows are going to be separated. Okay. Going to connect these two together. Input an efficiency here for the duct. I'll leave it as one. And let's take a look at what we have over here. The pressure is determined automatically based on the altitude um, and the uh, conditions uh, at sea level. Oops. And the speed. There we go. Uh, but I'm going to need to specify an initial value here for the for the total value of the temperature. That's based on what's coming out of here and what's coming out of here as well. Let's take for example 500 Kelvin. I can click on calculate. Uh, here we can see the uh, the heat loss is missing, so I can specify this. Click on calculate, um, and here of course it tells me that. The, uh, the fluid in link number 12 is not currently defined uh, because here what's happening is that we're going to have one particular fluid coming here that's going to be air going into the core and then we have our fuel we have our flue gases that are going to be down here and now these flue gases are going to be mixing with the air that's being compressed by the fan and going through the, uh, the duct over here so I now have a different flue gas coming into the system so it's okay, I can just come here and go back to custom variable and select my second flue gas that was created. I can then click on calculate. We'll see the iterations are going to converge. And we can also see a report of everything that was calculated about this particular cycle. So we'll see things like the uh, thrust, uh, which is what was uh, our parameter of interest from the beginning. We're going to be able to see the specific fuel consumption, um, how much uh, total power production we're going to have, how much, power, how much power consumption we're also going to have, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay. So here there's going to be quite a lot of things that are going to be able to, um, to be analyzed from this particular system. And here I could go ahead and look at the engine component, change that I don't want something at ground level, but I want to be flying at, at 3,000 feet or 10,000 feet or 30,000 feet um, and select here different aircraft speeds to see uh, how this entire system is going to be uh, operating. Okay, so this was how to create um, 
a relatively moderate uh, complexity cycle, so it's got quite a number of, uh, of components in there. But you can see everything was done here within like a half hour or so. Um, and this was done from scratch. Um, and you saw absolutely all the different steps that we would take to create such a system. There is no programming involved, so you can actually focus on being an engineer here. And um, everything is going to be very well uh, user-friendly. That's going to be through the GUI, uh, which allows you to really display all the different parameters of interest in your system. Once you've got such a system like this, uh, you're going to be able to manipulate it doing whatever you want. We're going to have, let me just save this, we're going to have different multi-run tools that you can use uh, to run any type of study of interest. Uh, so you can review the uh, TS or pH diagrams, so you can see um, how your particular process is going to behave for, for the cycle. We're going to be able to run some parametric studies using the map tool. We have a plan tool which will be used for design of experiment optimizations. Quest is going to be another algorithm that we use for optimization, uh, but it's going to be revolving around the uh, Monte Carlo um, type of solver. And finally, we're going to have case here, which is going to help you um, study different uh, node points or engine conditions, for example, uh, for your particular system. And finally, it also helps you with creating a report so that you can take a screenshot, uh, print it from here, and then print the report as well. You can provide this to, uh, to your boss, your supervisor, uh, or even your teacher, if you're a student. Um, and and then you're, you're pretty much good to go. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, I will show you just uh, one of the tools here, just to give you a very brief idea about the type of things that you can be, uh, you can be looking at. Um, so for the particular system that we looked at, these are going to be all the different parameters that will be able to vary. So we can see in here we have, we're going to have two different types of parameters. Some that are going to be in red, which correspond to the fixed parameters that I had set up in my cycle. And we're also going to have some that are going to be shown in green, which are going to correspond to some zero-dimensional model of how the particular component is going to behave. You can see, for example, the efficiency, uh, we're going to see the pressure ratio, and so on and so forth. So you could change the pressure ratio, for example. Uh, let's change, for example, the bypass ratio in the fan. Let's do this from 4 to 5 with a step of 0.2. Uh, it's going to be very simple, and just for fun, let's select another variable. Uh, let's say the, uh, the mass flow rate at the intake, and we'll do this between 400 and 500 with a step of uh, 10, for example. On the right side, this would be all the different parameters that you can output from the calculation. Uh, so for the nozzle, let's say we want to have uh, the uh, thrust values, uh, we're going to want, for example, the pressure and the temperature uh, for the ambient conditions. Um, let's see how much power is being consumed by the compressor, how much power is being consumed by the fan. Uh, so all of this can be done in here uh, pretty easily. And this follows exactly the um, properties table that you had for each of the different components. Okay. So we'll select the power for the turbines as well, and a couple of different information for the uh, um, for the overall global parameters here. Net thrust, growth thrust, and the efficiency. Once you're ready, just click on calculate. It's automatically going to create here the matrix of all the different runs of interest for your particular cycle. So here we can see variable one in this case is kept the same at four uh, for the bypass ratio, but now we are varying variable number two by doing 400 kilograms per second at the inlet, 410, 420, 430, and so on. So here you can see I have 11 different variations of my second variable, and I'm going to have, if I scroll down, I'm going to have uh, six different variations of my first variable. So that means I have um, uh, 66 different uh, combinations of parameters 
that are currently being calculated. And here you can see in real time um, how fast and convenient this software is going to be. So as the software is processing all of the data, you can already review what um, what information is outputted. So here we can see the, uh, the thrust. We can see that here, because I'm not changing the speed or the altitude of cruise, the ambient conditions are going to remain the same. But nonetheless, because we have different um, bypass ratios from the fan and different amount of flow going through them, um, we're going to see the uh, power on the fan is going to be different uh, for each of the different runs. In the same way, the power from the compressors and therefore from the turbines um, is going to be changed as well. And here again, you can see that there's going to be a perfect power match between uh, the components that are going to be on the same spool. If you wanted to have, for example, the bypass fan to be on the low pressure spool, then that's fine. You could just go back to your cycle, connect the mechanical port from the fan to the compressor, which is already going to the turbine, and then the turbine is just going to have um, a different pressure at the outlet, such that it generates more power to account for the one consumed by both the fan and the compressor altogether. Okay, here we can see that this is now calculated and complete. I can copy this onto Excel, for example. We do have some export features directly inside the software, um, and we can also do some uh, visual display here as well. So we can see as we change the uh, bypass ratio, I call this uh, BPR. Uh, we can look, for example, at the uh, at the fan power, and here we can see uh, that's going to be a little bit changing, but not too too much. Um, but let's look now at oops. We'll look at multiple things at the same time. We'll look at all the different powers from the compressing components. So these down here are probably going to be for my uh, my first compressor. Here we're going to have the fan one, and we're going to have uh, down uh, up here, sorry, the uh, the high pressure uh, compressor. So we can see that here for each of the values of my uh, bypass uh, ratio, I'm going to have a particular value of power that's going to be um, um, that's going to be um, uh, calculated. Okay. okay, so this is, we can also look at everything on a 3D uh, basis as well, but uh, I think it's easier to understand graphs at the 2D level. Okay, so this is most of everything I wanted to show you today. Um, one thing I do want to mention before, uh, before we leave this off is uh, that we do create 100% of our software ourselves. So that means that we have a very dedicated uh, developer team and also a very dedicated uh, technical support team as well. So as you're working with the software, we have engineers pretty much on a 24 hour basis that are going to be able to help you understand why your cycle is not converging or um, what type of component you should be using uh, and so on. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to mention that's going to be very important, especially for this type of system, is currently, if we look, for example, at the turbine, we've only specified one value of efficiency. But we have different ways that we can model this. And one of those ways is going to be to use here a map. There would be a simple text file that says, based on these boundary conditions, um, so it could be, for example, your, your pressure ratio or your mass flow rate or your rotational speed, um, then the efficiency corresponding is going to be that. So that means that as I'm going to be changing the parameters inside my cycle, the efficiency of the turbine and all the other, on, and all the other components as well, depending on what I'm interested in, are going to be changed uh, to account for the overall of design conditions of the system. That concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any question, feel free to email us at info at Thank you.